Uh, my name is Kathleen Danielson, and today I am talking about meeting in person. Uh, this will be a little bit of a combination of very uh, specific examples and suggestions, as well as some broader thoughts on uh, meetings and communities um, and how they apply and what they mean to OpenStreetMap. Uh, by way of introduction, I am a board member of OpenStreetMap US, uh, which is the US chapter of OpenStreetMap You're at our conference. Um, creator, co-organizer of GODC, which is a monthly meetup we have here in DC uh, where we get together and drink beer and talk about maps. Uh, I'm a project manager. I spend my uh, day job working with developers, designers, business analysts, uh, doing a lot of cat herding. Um, and I do a lot of online community management um, just in the past through work or for fun. Um, all that to say, community is what I do. Community is my jam. If I had to sum up my life skills, I would say it's getting people into the same room to drink beer and do nerdy things. I have put this on job applications. <laughs> I've never gotten applause for it though, but yeah, I have put it on job applications of varying success. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I'm going to keep doing it. For example, uh, this is a little over a year ago at GODC. Um, you can see it's not a good picture, you can't see, but you can just believe me that it's a room full of people drinking beer and doing nerdy things. So the main things I want you to take away from this. Um, are that if we can save community, if we can improve community, we can uh, improve the open street map and the world, if you liked the first couple seasons of Heroes. Um, every community is unique. Uh, I really truly mean this. I say it jokingly a lot of times, but I really do mean every community is a special snowflake. Um, each one has its own very uh, specific circumstances. You need to take care of yourself. Um, that's a really important part of community planning. And then also community scales. Everything that I'm talking about today can scale up or down uh, to from the sort of five, okay, people need to not text me while I'm talking. Um, they, it will scale up from the smallest, uh, like two person, two people meeting in a pub up to uh, the global community of OpenStreetMap itself. So, okay, so why? What, why does this matter? Why does meeting in person matter? What, um, who cares? Um, so a couple reasons. This community has uh, really diverse interests. Everyone got involved in it for very different reasons. Um, the person sitting next to you probably got involved in OpenStreetMap for a very different reason than you did. Learn about that. Find out why. You're going to uh, end up with a much better perspective on the project and on your work. Also, mapping is a pretty solitary task. The, um, the work we're doing with OpenStreetMap really does lend itself to kind of just sitting and clicking in your computer. Um, so it's really easy to go down that rabbit hole and forget about uh, the broader community that, is, that is, makes OpenStreetMap what it is. Um, if you can, or if someone can kind of start galvanizing those local in-person uh, events, Maybe you can help yourself get out of that sort of rabbit hole or help somebody else get out of it just by providing that opportunity. And it can also, um, I also think it's really important to be establishing more in-person hubs for um, the project. There are sort of some that are uh, getting started and in different uh, cities. So you've got DC, you've got San Francisco, New York, Chicago, different cities are building up these hubs. And the more and more we have them, the healthier um, the, healthier the community becomes. Which leads to my next point, which is community health. This is something that is uh, pretty important to me. And if you spend any time talking to me uh, about OpenStreetMap, sooner or later I will tell you how much I hate the mailing lists. Um, most of you actually have probably already heard me talk about this. Um, sometimes they're great, but mailing lists as a tool, as a concept, um, can be conducive to unhealthy conversation. Uh, they allow for a uh, very reactionary uh, talk, they, you're sitting behind a screen, it doesn't feel like you're talking to a real person. Um, so some, it depends on the mailing list, it depends on the group, it depends on level of moderation. Mailing lists can be a challenge, uh, but building real world connections can help. Uh, with the mailing list being our primary mode of communication, uh, we need to find a way to work with them. 
So building these real world communication, uh, real world connections can help. Um, they mean they mean that for people who have those connections, those mailing lists aren't the only uh, the only link to the community, and they also mean that you know the person who's at the other end of that email thread, which is uh, really big. It's not just a name on your screen. It's somebody you met and had beers with uh, six months ago. What this also comes uh, comes down to is that it sort of looks at as something of a bottom-up approach to global community building. Using uh, more of a grassroots approach is another way that we can work on improving the health of the OpenStreetMap community globally and locally. And uh, when I talk about a healthier community, um, it's not going to spontaneously create itself. We have to do it. I have to do it. You have to do it. If you're in this room, hopefully it's because you have some kind of interest in community of OpenStreetMap. And it's up to us to make it better than it is uh, today and for us tomorrow to make it better. Okay, so that's a lot of the kind of high level why. Why should we bother doing this? So I'm going to do a quick run through of some hows, um, just from my own experiences, what tools, what resources I've found useful. Your own experience will be different, but maybe these are some things you can try. Maybe it'll give you some different ideas. So I used to have in this slide that this isn't hard, and I took that out because putting, um, putting a community together is hard work and it is important work. Um, it's not scary. But it, it's a big task and it's an important one. But don't let anybody tell you it's easy and don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing isn't important. If you don't get pick up right away, that's okay. This is hard. I'm gonna actually keep repeating that. Um, try it again. Rethink your approach. So maybe reach out for suggestions. Reach out to people locally. Reach out to people across the country who've done this before. See what they think. And also, it's okay if it doesn't work out. That's, that's okay too. Um, I to, like I said, every community is a special snowflake. Every place has its unique challenges. Maybe try again in six months. Maybe try again in a year. Maybe find different ways to get engaged. But give it a shot, and here are some ways that might work. So there are a couple of pretty basic things that you need to do. you got to find the other mappers. You have to tell people about it. You have to find have programming, so you have to have something to do. And you need to find ways to keep it going. Um, so here's just a list of some cities. There are cities missing here, like Portland is not on here. There are a handful of others. Um, these are cities that have, to some extent, some local community uh, going on. Um, these are also, n the communities that uh, I'm thinking about in these places are not all exclusively OpenStreetMap focused, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So finding people in your area, there are some other talks, and there are some good resources that you can find about that. Um, Ito has an OSM mapper that lets you run really easy queries. Uh, Pascal Nice has an um, OSM contributors map, uh, which helps you find people. Um, and then there is also the Talk US mailing list. I know I've already told you how much I hate the mailing list, but um, they do actually, <laughs> they're also useful. Um, and so the talk, the talk US mailing list in particular uh, is usually pretty receptive if you're you know, saying, you know, I, I looked and haven't been able to find people in my area. Anyone have any contacts? This is just an example of the OSM mapper that uh, Ito World provides. Okay, so you maybe found a couple people, um, but you want to tell more people. So uh, you want to communicate, you want to spread the word, different tools um, from obvious to less, ob more obvious to less obvious. Things like email um, for a group that is just starting out, a uh, Google group is going to be really the best way to go. Um, it's free, it's easy, nobody has to have signed up for anything. You just add their email address to the group. Um, Twitter, if you're a Twitter user, uh, that's a really good way to find communities uh, in your area, find people who might be interested. Um, Facebook, this is one that I'd say two years ago I would not have added, because I would have been like, oh, that's stupid, nobody uses Facebook. But then I got involved with the DC Homebrew Club, because of course I did, and uh, they really, really like their, their Facebook group, um, which just shocked me. They used it constantly, and so that really reinforces the idea that Every community is a special snowflake, and there are, I'm sure if I dug into it, there would be reasons that that group really um, thrived on Facebook. So just because I think it's stupid doesn't mean it is. Um, and then the last one I wanted to mention is Meetup. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of Meetup. It is not free, um, it's, so it's, you know, it's a proprietary uh, tool, which it can be a drawback to some people. Um, it is an excellent, excellent way to meet new people. This is just a uh, 
screen cap of what Meetup looks like. Um, it's a great way to bring new people in. I can't tell you how many times uh, I have asked a new person how they heard about the event, and they said, oh, I just saw it on Meetup. Um, it really does expand your reach uh, ex exponentially. So I started getting at this a little bit. You need to meet your community where they are. You need to find out where they're talking, what kind of tools they want to use, what sort of tools do they feel comfortable with. If you're with a group of very non-technical users and you tell them, great, we're going to meet up on IRC once a month, I promise you, you will not get any traction. Meet your community where they are. Know what your audience is. Know what your audience's level is and what they care about. And then taking that forward, um, find out what your community needs. Um, if you have a community of highly technical users, they probably don't need a basic tutorial or vice versa. If you have a community that you've been meeting regularly uh, for a while and they're all pretty familiar, um, you know, they don't kind of keep giving them those early tutorials, so ask them. Um, for GODC, the meetup that I ran, the first, uh, the first uh, meeting that we ever had, it was just a community forum. Um, and we just said, okay, what, what are you interested in? What do you want to hear about? What subjects are interesting? What format is interesting? Um, and we listen. So keep trying new things. And, and again, different things are going to work for different communities. In that, for that group, uh, we found a format that worked really, really well. Um, we, we ironed it out. We, we don't change it up. That works really well. That's not going to work for every, every group. Some groups are going to get bored with that. That's fine. And then remember to reassess. What your group needed two years ago probably isn't the same thing that it needs now. Okay, so we found some mappers, we've told people about it, we kind of know what they want, so now what do we do? Um, there are a lot of different options. Um, this is obviously not an exhaustive list. You can come up with your own ideas. Um, they're gonna be so, you can have a social meetup, so like a mappy hour if you really like puns, which I hope you do. Uh, those are really just go to a bar and maybe someone will bring a laptop and maybe you'll map things or maybe you'll just sit around and talk about maps. That's what I do when I go to bars. Um, you could have a mapping party where it's either field mapping, you go out surveying, or armchair mapping. You sort of just stay in and you know do whatever the mapping you were doing before except you're with a bunch of other people. Informal presentations as well, uh, lightning talks, um, demos, workshops. Um, you can, get, you can get something like map time started, which you'll hear about later today in the lightning talks. Um, it's a really interesting uh, program that's been uh, sort of spreading out to several different cities. Uh, lots of tutorials, there are a lot of, they've been putting together a lot of good um, support materials. Um, and then edit-a-thons, which are um, something that we have been supporting. The OpenStreetMap US board has been encouraging um, quarterly edit-a-thons, which are a great thing to, that, um, happen once a quarter and where we encourage basically all the local communities around the country to get together and have an event. Mm -hmm. So this is a really good thing to latch on to maybe as like a first event or you know if you haven't done anything in a while to sort of get um, momentum kind of coming back to it. Uh, we try and I think are trying to get more, have more and more materials for people uh, to have those ready that um, you can sort of move forward and just say okay here plug and play and uh, you know, give everyone the materials they need. Um, and so then, the one thing I did want to mention was, does this need to be all open street map all the time? No, I don't think so. Um, I think you can have whatever scope you want, and particularly um, when you're just getting started, having such a narrow focus will be really hard. If you don't have a really large uh, geo-focused community in your area to begin with, then that may be too specific. You may just want, you know, there are people who really think maps are cool. So great, talk about maps. Doesn't even have to necessarily be tech stuff. You could say, you know, bring in your favorite map from when you were a kid. Bring in a map of a fictional world from a book that you loved. Maps are cool. Um, but I will say that's probably an easier way to get started um, in a place that doesn't have existing um, geo communities. And so you want to keep things going. So a um, couple ideas are things like as you're starting to run out of ideas, maybe connect with other groups. There are going to be things like environmental groups. There'll be a lot of interest overlap there. Um, tech groups are going to have some interest. There are things like uh, free tutorial schools um, in DC. There's something called Knowledge Commons DC. Uh, these are different groups that can get uh, interested, help you introduce more people into your, into your group, help your um, community meet others as well. Um, do not try this alone. Do not start and have a group. Do not run a community alone. 
have someone help you. That is the easiest way to burn out. The easiest way for a group to fail, if that's a thing, is to try to do it alone and say you can do it on your own. You are going to have off months. You're going to have a day you're sick and can't make it to the meetup, or you um, just need somebody to be working on it with you. And then um, also, seriously, don't forget to reassess your community's needs. If you're not listening to them, you're not going to be able to serve them. So what I was saying before about not doing this alone is part of uh, taking care of yourself. This is something that's really, really important when it comes to community management. If you're not doing this, you're doing yourself a disservice. Nobody is going to advocate for taking care of yourself but you, and you need to remember to do that. So you need to avoid burnout. Um, which is a very real issue. Um, so like I said, try to have at least one other co-organizer. Um, don't be afraid to ask your community for help or for resources. Um, you're probably doing this for free. And it's okay to say, hey, does anybody have ideas for topics for next week? Or um, would people be okay with pitching in a couple bucks for pizza? Or, um, you know, can somebody lead that uh, workshop next week? I got a really busy week at work. I don't think I can, um, can help. Be aware of what kind of programming and what sort of schedule you can realistically support. If it's just you on your own, which it shouldn't be, you probably won't be able to do weekly, like, two-hour-long tutorials. It's unlikely that you're going to be able to support that. And then finally, make sure it's fun for you. Um, take a break if you need it. If you've been doing it for a while and you need some time out, that's totally fine. Say, you know what, this has been great. I'm out for the summer. I will see you guys again in the fall. It's going to be a really good time. That's totally okay. You're allowed to do that. So then all of that I've been talking about is a little more like in the weeds, but this stuff all scales. So this isn't really just about having an in-person um, interaction with somebody at a bar or at an office. Um, these, all these ideas totally scale up to like a regional and a national and an international level. So I think one thing that I would love to talk to all of you about is sort of how can we help each other build stronger local communities? What can we be doing? What can I be doing to help my friends in San Francisco with their, um, with their work? Can I be proofreading their talks? Can I give them ideas? Um, so what, how can we help each other build these local, stronger local communities? And then having these local communities, what does that mean for the national um, U.S. community? How does having a local community help the U.S.? have a better um, national sort of local chapter. And then beyond that, I think what is really interesting is then how can these communities, the local chapters, or the, the country level, the state level um, chapters, how can they be working with each other? I think there's one thing that um, in, in lieu of a uh, larger uh, OSMF, with that, that it doesn't have um, kind of community governing structure, I think that there's a vacuum there that the local chapters can really fill in terms of this is a global community and there's a lot of opportunities for global exchange, for um, people just getting to know each other, working with each other. The German community, the French community, these are all huge communities that we don't tend not to talk to a lot. So let's do something about that. So I have a lot of sort of thoughts about maybe different exchanges. Um, you know, one thing that, so I've been lucky, I've had a chance to do a tiny bit of traveling and so when I've done it, I've been able to meet mappers, and that's really fun. And so, you know, I've met, this is a picture of, uh, in Amsterdam, the, they had geo drinks there, and I've met mappers in Belgium. One of them is staying with me this weekend. Um, I've met mappers in Paris. I've met mappers in Rome. And these are all tiny little bits that make me realize there's so much connection that can be done that the, we're not getting in the mailing list. There's so much more that just these little tiny in-person bits um, are making me realize that the, the community, the fabric of the community is so much richer than, than a tribe mailing list. And there's so much we can do to get more out of that, to, to experience that more. Um, and I think just having like that in-person pub meetup, that's the first step. So like I was saying, main things, if we can save community, we can save OpenStreetMap. Communities seriously, seriously are all special snowflakes. You have to take care of yourself. And then everything I was talking about absolutely scales all the way up to the international level. Any questions?